Hey, Peter Gregg, Miami, Florida. Welcome to the Christmas Room. I want to show you how I set up my Canon 80D. Sit back, relax. You are about to watch a Peter Gregg video. Something warm, human, and wonderful happens when you watch Peter Gregg. Hey, guys. I have the ADD in hand. I took it off the tripod. I've been making some videos with it, right? And I've been promising to show you how I set the camera up when I first get it in. So we're going to do that now. I am I have the GH4 set up over here. Can you see that? Yeah, it's in the frame. It's right there. So you got you and me, Boo Boo and Bobo. <laughs> we named the cameras. All right, so what we're going to do is I'm just going to go through the menus for those of you that do have that interest and show you how I set up the ADD for myself. And you might like it this way, too. So let's get started. So I'm going to take a chair. I'm going to put the camera down here. And I'm going to make sure that you can see it. I have it reset now. Okay. All right, so both uh, cameras are running right now. And this is the menu of the Canon ADD when you first open it up. The menus go across the top. And as you go left and right, you see like the red camera menu has got one, two, three, four, five, six sub menus. And you use the wheel to go back and forth. Well, what if you want to go from there to there? Well, you got two ways. That isn't one of them. This is one of them, okay? You could tap. Now you're in the blue play menu. Now you're in the wrench, which sets up the uh, uh, different areas of the camera pertaining to the continue, uh, uh, communications, uh, formatting the card, so on and so forth. Uh, this one is where you can set up individual controls. Let's say you come from Nikon, you wanna reverse how things working instead of left to right, right to left, or something like that. That would be done in here. And in here is where you would set up uh, your custom menus. So the custom menus become important because it allows you to go there quickly when you get a little flustered and, and uh, you don't know exactly where to find something. You place it in the star, okay? And the star has two uh, menus uh, or two selections and it allows one two three four five on each one so you can have five on this one on the number one and number two you can have five again uh, let's see where's a pointer here this is the center sweep that's where the number two is see it right there two the green two and if I move that over it becomes a number one all right so let's start from the beginning, which is the red section. All right, with the red section, the first thing I do is I go to image quality. Now, this is a very personal preference, okay? So you don't do this unless this is something that you want. But I click on set, and uh, it tells me how to deal with the raw and how to deal with the JPEG. So uh, if I don't want any of them, it gives me the, the blank or the minus sign. See it? On the RAW, it's set up now for no RAW, and it's going to shoot large JPEG. Well, that's not how I shoot. I shoot completely different. As soon as I take the camera, the card out of the camera, boom, it goes right in the computer. It goes right into Lightroom, and soon to be ACDC. Uh, and uh, I go from RAW. I have presets for my individual cameras, and I finish them in there. So I want the raw to be selected so I'm going to choose raw and I don't want any JPEG at all now if this was a camera that had two card slots which it does not okay I would shoot raw on the top one and this is for you guys that don't have an ADD let's say you have a 5D Mark IV or you have a Nikon or something that has two card slots uh, you're going to be able to control those so for the second card slot I shoot medium uh, and what is it? I shoot uh, the highest level, the lowest level of medium, because we have two levels of medium here. All right, and that's basically a hail mary for me, uh, meaning if everything goes to pot in a handbag, goes to hell in a handbag, as they say, I will still have <clears throat> a medium size uh, uh, JPEG image. 
So on a car on a camera with two card slots, which this camera doesn't have that, so I don't want you to get confused, but I'm just talking to the folks that are just being curious to see what's going on. And if you have two card slots, you could say to me, Peter, how are you setting up your two card slots? And I set up my two card slots by putting the raw in the first one and the lowest level of medium in the second one. And then I just change the raw files throughout the wedding, throughout the event, throughout whatever it is that I'm shooting when I fill up the first card. Now, this camera only having one, I only want to shoot raw and I don't want to shoot JPEG. So all the, all the images that are going to come off of here are going to be raw. Then I press set and that's okay. And that's uh, okay. Uh, that sets it. Okay. So the next thing is image review. Two seconds is not long enough for me. Okay, I like it four seconds. So uh, I will vacillate between four seconds and off. Um, but usually four seconds is fine and I'm not gonna get into off at this point because that would be something I would use in a case of a wedding and I don't want this back LCD to light up uh, and, and draw att attention to me. So that's why I would use off. But for everything else, I like four seconds and I set it to four seconds. The next thing, the first thing I do is shut the beep off. I don't want people to know uh, when I am focusing, how often I'm focusing. I don't want, uh, you know, it's bad enough the camera goes ka -chish. Now every time I, I press the shutter button halfway to focus, it goes beep, 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 beep. So I don't want that. All right, now shutter release without the card. On a lot of the cameras, uh, I would say on, but if you want to make sure that you don't screw up and start taking pictures and then realize, oh crap, I don't have a card in there, you would want to set this to disable. So now if there's no card in the camera, the camera ain't going to work. Now the next one is lens aberration correction. Uh, you would use that one very rarely, okay? You just leave it alone. and. Uh, it's enabled or disabled. So the reason that you need to know that that's there is if you buy a Sigma art lens, particularly the 35 millimeter 1.4 Sigma art lens, it causes havoc for some reason with the Canon cameras. So what you're going to do? So you're going to come over here and you're going to change that from enabled to everything disabled. And then you're done with that. But that's only for that particular lens. All right, so the next thing over, I don't change anything else here. The next thing over is uh, the ISO settings. This is if you want to uh, 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 limit the range of the camera. Let's say you don't want it to go to 16,000. Uh, you can limit it there. Or the auto range where it would stay between 1 and 6400 ISO. Now for this camera, uh, I don't keep it at, at 6400. I let it go up uh, a little higher to 12,800. Now if I'm on a paid job, then I keep it to 6400. Uh, but uh, having with 1.4 lenses and 2.8 lenses, that doesn't bother me all that often. But if you get the kit lens, you might want to keep an eye on that. So I'm going to leave that alone to 6400. And this one's important, uh, minimum shutter speed, auto. The auto minimum shutter speed is going to recognize what lens, if you have a Canon lens on there, and try to put the best shutter speed, uh, the best minimum shutter speed for that lens. So if you had a, uh, let's say, a uh, the 105 macro uh, or the 100 f2 lens, which is a sleeper lens, by the way, uh, you would want it to uh, give you a higher shutter speed. Otherwise, you're going to get camera shake. So this camera doesn't come with image stabilization. So what we're doing here is we're letting the camera handle it for us. But if you wanted to actually go to a higher one, uh, you could still leave it to auto, okay? But you can uh, cause it to go a little higher, okay? And uh, uh, a faster shutter speed even though you're leaving it on auto. So it, give, it makes the error in your favor. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it there because it don't matter to me. All right, and then I go back to the menu settings. All right, so 
This is also where you do white balance. If you don't know how to do white balance, it's in the red two, and you're gonna go to custom white balance and the white balance and between those two you're going to take a picture and set it to use the custom white balance read the manual okay i know guys don't read manuals but those are the two that you're going to want to do all right uh, color space i always do it to srgb unless i'm shooting a wedding and if i'm shooting a wedding then i do go to adobe rgb all right but for you no just leave it to srgb or you're going to open up a can of worms all right number three picture style it's going to come automatically in the auto setting that's the very top one the red box is the highlighted box which is the one that i'm speaking about so if you're going like where where is he talking what is he talking about it's this highlighted box right here see picture style it's got a red box around it all right that's the one that we are talking about and let's make sure that all the cameras are recording all right um so I'm going to change that because I don't shoot in auto. I shoot it on my own. So I'm going to go down to, I can either go to neutral or I can go down to user defined. Okay. And so that I don't screw everything else up, I'm going to go to user defined. And when you go in there to actually get it, you need to set, you need to push the info button or tap here. All right. So the picture style that I use is going to be neutral that's the red box right there because what I want is the flattest picture that I can get and I'm going to correct my pictures uh, in Lightroom or I'm going to correct my pictures for my case Final Cut Pro for the movies okay you could be using iMovie you could be using uh, Windows movies you could be using uh, uh, Final Cut Pro like I do you could be using Adobe uh, or you can be using Vegas Pro, so on and so forth. So I'm going to set it for neutral, okay? Then I'm gonna go down here, and I'm going to put everything to zero. See the strength, whoops. I'm going to go here. I'm going to come here and see how you go from one to zero. I want it to zero. So that's the strength. Now the fineness, I want to set that to one, which is the furthest left that I can go. Then the threshold, I want that to be all the way to the left. Set it to the left. Now is contrast, and if I go into contrast, it's in the middle, which is at zero, okay? But I don't want zero. I want nothing. <laughs> so I'm going all the way to the negative here. That's not really negative. It's basically turning off my contrast control. Okay, and then I'm going to saturation, and again, we get this plus minus, plus minus crap, okay, with zero in the middle, meaning neutral. However, I don't want it to neutral. I want it all the way to the left. I don't want the camera, uh, the computer in the camera, to address my pictures. Now, the color tone is something I do a little bit different, and I go up one on color tone. See, upper left hand tells you what I'm doing. This is the scale. This is the minus, and this is the plus. Zero is in the middle, okay? I want the plus, the very first one I can go to. So now I have it set to everything down, low, 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 and I go back to the menu, and I am now shooting with my own color um, uh, uh, selections uh, already uh, done, okay? So I set it OK, and it's going to say picture style, user defined. All right, now the rest of this, I'm not going to change anything. You can, OK. Uh, over here, you've got uh, where your mirror lockup is uh, uh, to um, keep the camera from shaking on long exposures. You would use that for that. Uh, on menu 5, all right, uh, this is where you can uh, choose the AF method and uh, it, this is using the uh, tracking and face control. That first little bitty image right there is supposed to look like a face. Two eyes, a nose, and a smile. A little weird, huh? And the guy's looking this way. Uh, and then if it doesn't find a face, it's automatically going to switch to tracking. When it finds a face, it's going to automatically go back. And that's the one that I use. Your other choices is uh, flex zone, flexi zone, 
and then a different type of flexi zone where you're going to actually uh, uh, choose the spots. I'm not going to get into that because this is not a camera lesson. This is where I'm, uh, uh, you know, showing you how to uh, set up the camera. Now, if you want to touch the screen and have it focus and fire, you would turn on touch shutter and make it enabled instead of disabled. Just throw, I would, wanted to throw that in. No extra charge for that. All right, this is silent uh, viewing, viewing mode and, and shooting mode. There is no silent mode on this camera. Okay, that's a crock of whatever. All right, so that's the first things that I do to set up the camera. And that goes through all six menus on the red one. Now on the blue one, I don't make any changes here at all unless I actually run across something where I do want to make a change. And that would be very specific. But for you and for me, when we first start, no, we're not changing nothing in the blue box. All right, now in this one here, uh, I'm not gonna make any changes here, but remember the wrench on one is something you're gonna use pretty often. Um, on two, the auto power off, um, that's the two. I went from one to two, okay, and we're in the golden wrench. The auto power off is annoying to me. I bring that down to eight minutes. That's designed to save power, but it also can screw you up because the camera gets turned off very quickly. I don't like that, so I bring it down to eight minutes. So if I walk away and I forgot the camera on in eight minutes, it's gonna shut the puppy off, okay? Uh, the next one's going to be for your LCD brightness. All of these, I don't have anything to change. Uh, the video system, this is if you're going to be PAL or NTSC, uh, you would change it there. Uh, if you're going to clean the sensor, like I have the sensor sweep, which is my own product that I use to clean sensors, and I'm going to make a video on that because I've got a little update for that for 2018. Uh, and you would come in here, you would go to sensor cleaning, what that's going to do basically is it's going to pop the mirror up and it's going to give you instructions, turn the camera off, uh, different cameras do it differently, then you clean your sensor uh, and then you turn the camera on. I think on this camera you leave the camera on and when you're done you turn the camera off. So I'm actually just confusing you now. So you're going to have to do it that's unique to your camera. So I clean a lot of different cameras for my buddies. All right, So that's why it can get confusing. Uh, but this is where you would find it, the gold three, all right? And then in the gold four is where you would clear all your settings. Let's say you get completely screwed up. The camera's not working very well at all. You don't know what went down and why it happened. You would come in here and clear all camera settings, okay? And this also shows you where your firmware is. So if they do a firmware update to the camera, you can come here to compare the firmware that you've got versus the firmware that... Uh, uh, they just released now and these are the custom exposures and this is in the orange section okay uh, I'm not going to go through that but there's nothing much that I change here uh, I just leave it uh, pretty much alone uh, but if th these are the settings that you can do uh, you know for your exposure and so on and so forth so I leave that alone or I have left it alone and then the last one is where you can add your own uh, quick menu, okay, and you get two of them. One, which is what it's on now, and then the next one over is two. Oops. Okay, so you got two and one. So what did I put here? I added format card so that I can quickly come in here and format a card, which is where the 5D Mark IV gets you because when it formats a card for video, it does it incorrectly and splits up your videos. But for those of us that work in a normal way, we format the cards, and uh, I, w I need a quick way to get there, so I have it in the star menu. I have my custom white balance in here, so that I can custom white balance on the fly anywhere that I'm at. Okay, I have a white bracket, uh, uh, white balance uh, shifting bracket, which I was just testing something that normally would not stay there. And I have sound recording, which allows me to plug in an external mic, and I can come in here and balance the volume with this the, the round wheel on the back, and the wireless communication settings. That's where I turn on and off the Wi-Fi so that I can actually bring the, uh, the phone, which is what I have here, controlling the GH5. So you can see, see me sitting here in the chair while I'm going through this. So this is how you turn it on here for this camera, 
okay? And how you do you configure this? You come down here, you go to my menu, configure. Uh, you can select delete selected items. I'm gonna take out the white balance. Do you want to delete this? Yes or no? I'm gonna click okay. And now I've got three thing, four things. I can add a fifth one if there was something that I really wanted. So that's pretty much how I set up the camera. Uh, the other thing that I do, we'll go back to the menu. Okay, we'll go back here. On the top of the camera, you have uh, the ability to set two custom settings, one and two. See it there? It's in manual right now. If I turn this, you got to hold the button to turn it, which is something I don't like. It used to make it so it would turn on and off, but now you got to hold the button. So custom one and custom two. So what I do is I set up my movies because I do a lot of videos for YouTube on custom one. Then I don't actually have to come in and make a mistake by going in oops. Okay, so uh, that's where I set it up. But to go back to the manual thing part here, the one thing I did want to show you and it's going to turn the movie um, uh, mode on okay is I wanted to show you that uh, what did I want to show you okay in the red for number four okay this is where you set your uh, quality okay so uh, it's set for 1080 and IPB now I don't shoot in IPB so uh, I like to shoot in um, all I because that means every frame is being recorded in its entirety it's a bigger file and that's why they got IPB here so it's a smaller file so if you're sensitive to the size of your files you want to use uh, IPB see where it says standard IPB right above the red okay but it's grayed out because it won't shoot IPB in the mp4 format so I actually have to come here and change it to MOV then this one lights up okay and it's now set up for all I so it's going to give me a bigger size now in the last one here is the rec is the record size so I can shoot at uh, 30p or uh, 24p and of course I'm shooting at 30p uh, but when I shoot in, in combination with all the other cameras I shoot it in uh, 24p because I have the uh, GH4, the GH5, uh, 5D Mark IV all set for 24p. All right, but I've been running 30p on everything that I've been setting here. So, okay, so that recording is off and the GH5 just stays happily and merrily along the way. So I don't know if I actually changed positions now or what I've done. So I'm going to tap on my face again. And it brought the focus in again. Now that's where it gets dangerous with the GH5. And one of the reasons that I really, really like uh, the Canon dual pixel focus, I don't have to worry if the rest of my video is not in focus. Because if it's not in focus, it's going to be soft uh, or uh, something's going to be screwy and I have to come back and record it over. When you've done that three or four times, that gets really old. All right. So... That's what we got going. I went through all the settings for the uh, ADD. So I'll put links to those things down below. I'll put a link to this on uh, uh, b and is, which is uh, who sent me the camera to play with. And that pretty much ends it. So we're done. We're done. We're finished. We're good to go. Hit the road, Jack. All right. So <laughs> this is Peter Gregg. I'm in the Christmas room. Catch you later. Bye-bye. Whoosh. You have just watched another Peter Gregg video. Something warm, human, and wonderful happens when you watch Peter Gregg. Thank you for watching. Description of all equipment used in this video plus any notes Peter took while filming are always placed in the description box, show more box, or down arrow thingy next to the title on mobile apps. Duly noted.